and big on the screen for you. Uh, any day. This <laughs> lid would be really depth and all that. <laughs> so that's not going to happen today. I wonder who has a Bible with them, an actual, like, physical, hard copy Bible, or has a phone that they look up Bible stuff on. We have some of those around. If not, guess what? It's going to be okay because none of the scriptures that I'm going to read are real late things. But if I have people who want to actually look it up for themselves and read along with me, I actually want to know that so I can pause and give you time to look it up. So do I have people that want to do that and want to have a few minutes to find the spot? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I will do that. Okay. As we go along. All right. Let's start off with prayer. Father God, we thank you for the wonderful privilege of meeting together and listening to your word. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would speak through your written word and spoken word to our hearts, minds, and spirits. That it would do as your word says, that it would not come back to void but that it would accomplish the purpose that you sent it out for. We need your spirit to help us truly receive what you want to say to us. I ask you to speak through me and speak to our hearts, your heart's desire today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to start out with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. And I will wait a minute for those of you who want to look it up or write it down for later, but it's a very short problem. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk today about the importance of habits. And Liz is going to meddle with you just a little bit. Maybe. You might think I'm meddling just a little bit. <laughs> okay, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. So it's, it's a scripture and there are like a whole bunch of scriptures in Proverbs that talk about wisdom and how important it is and how needed it is. Um, and so today I want to talk about gaining some wisdom about habits, about our everyday lives. Not what we do up in here, but our everyday lives. So as a foundation for the idea that we're going to discuss it, we're going to discuss it because we need to get wisdom, right? Amen. And it tells us we need to get wisdom. Amen. We didn't know we got scripture for it, but we should know that. Mm -hmm. If you will now flip over into the New Testament, into Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. I will give you a minute to get there, and I will say, all habits bring results. All habits bring results. We might think habits are insignificant, but they all bring results, and they can all be helpful in your life and help you become who God has called you to be. They can be questionable, or they can be a hindering thing in your life, or even a destructive thing in your life. Right? They can have all different kinds of impact. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So same thing, it's saying whatever you do, something comes from it. Right? Reaping and sowing, agricultural terms, talking about planting seeds, and what comes from it. Mm -hmm. So depending on what you plant, you get different stuff. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so depending on what you are doing in your everyday life, different things come forth out of that. And sometimes because we serve a God who does do the miraculous, Sometimes we minimize the importance of 
what our part is in what we do in our everyday lives. What do I mean by that? Sometimes people uh, have high blood pressure and they pray for God to help them with that, but they eat enough salt and chips. Okay, so so is that wise? Well, no. God, see, God designed and created a world that has order and cause and effect, doesn't he? He he shows that about himself. The sun comes up at a certain time and it goes down and it has its cycles about what time it does that. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. There's all these things. Gravity is at work. Whether you are redeemed or not, gravity is at work. It's not a good idea to step off a cliff. Might not be wise. So do you serve a miraculous God? Even when Satan attempts to Jesus, right? Throw yourself off. Do you serve a miraculous God who sometimes steps in and intervenes and does supernatural things beyond the natural? Yes, you do. And can you look to him to do things like that? Yes. When it is in line with what he wants to do, he will step in and do miraculous things. However, the vast majority of the time, what is going on is part of the way he's created the natural order of things. If you study stuff, you tend to learn it. If you don't, you tend to not know it. Okay? So, I mean, those are very basic, very basic examples. But sometimes, as Christians, we have, we have certain categories where we believe that and other categories where we ignore that. You know, so you're, you're, everybody's down with the idea that gravity's in play. You, none, you had a problem with that. But sometimes there are other areas in our lives where we're ignoring the aspect of what we're doing is either contributing in a helpful way to who God has called us to be and what he wants to do in our lives, or maybe it's slowing it down, maybe it's blocking it, maybe it's destroying it. So, I mean, there's all different kinds of habits and all different kinds of levels. So it's important that we actually take a look at our habits. And, you know, habits can begin intentionally or unintentionally, right? Yes. yes. And so you've probably got a few habits that your parents intentionally instilled in you when you were really little. And now you still do it. You brush your teeth every morning. You know, somebody taught you to do that. Then there are habits that formed because you were adapting to something that was going on in your life at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you didn't even form it intentionally, but it was just an adaptation. And sometimes the habit stays after the things change, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a nephew who was in a very horrible car accident, and his leg was messed up very badly, and for a long time he had pins and casts and all kind of garbage on his leg. And when he got all through with all his surgeries and everything, he was all done with all of that, he still walked with this limp that came from having all this apparatus on him. And he actually had to teach himself and work at learning to walk normal again because his gait had just gotten used to doing that crazy thing. Well, we can be like that with other things in our lives. Sometimes we pick up things and then they're still hanging on and going on, but they, the use for them is gone. And the helpfulness is gone, but it's still going on in our lives. Now, I am not, and nobody else is in a place to evaluate all that stuff for you, about you. That's gonna be something between you and God. But I want to uh, just lay that foundation of the idea that even though this might sound like, a, you know, why are we talking about habits in church? You know, I mean, we want something more deep, more spiritual, more, New Revelation or whatever, you know. This is so basic. But um, I would submit to you that uh, it's real easy to understand that, you know, like alcoholism is a bad habit and exercising is a good habit, mm -hmm. but that we can be in a place where we have our own little personal life. It's not so blatant, but God still would like to tweak it for you. Because in his great love for you, he has more for you than where you are now. More for me than where I am now. He wants us to grow. And so in order to grow,
grow, we have to be open to the idea that God might want to show us something new about our everyday life that maybe if it was just adjusted, if this was just changed, if we just added this or we dropped this in our lives, we would be able to more fully live the life that he has for us. Okay, so it can, it can apply across the board a lot of things. I want to give you a scripture out of Deuteronomy, which is a little bit longer, but it is an example of God giving them habits he wanted them to form. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of some great habits that are in scripture just to give you an idea of some of the things that God was telling you. So in Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, verse 18 and 19, you can read that whole chapter to give you like more context and your own personal time. We have time for that. Um, but I will just read to you, and those of you who have your Bibles, you can read along, and then we will talk about it a little bit. Fix these words of mine on your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Now, this might sound like, what? Uh, tie this stuff on your forehead and your hands and what the heck is all of this? talking about. Um, the, they had scriptures that they actually put in these little boxes and things and actually put them on them. But the idea there is that it was a part of the day, it was an intentional part of the day, every day, to reflect on who God is and what he has done. And we all need that. I am not going to tell you how to make that happen in your life. What time, how long, what method. What I am going to say is that he was building his people at the time. He was teaching them how to live a blessed life. And part of how to live that blessed life was for them themselves and to teach their children, not just on Sunday, not just when you went to a class somewhere, but as part of your daily routine, who God is, what he has said, what he has done. Remind yourself and remind the people in your life, your children, your family, your friends, who God is, what he's done and what he has said and make it part of your everyday thing. It's in the morning and in the evening. So you need to start out your day with your focus. You know, they, they, they put the scriptures right on their forehead. You want the focus of your thoughts to start out with who God is. Yes. Okay, so you might use one of these old-fashioned books. You might put scriptures up on the wall in your house. You can do lots of things. You can put stuff on your phone. You can have scriptures come to you as text. You know, there's lots of different things you can do. But you need it, and you need it every day. And God wants to talk to you personally every day. And your children need the input of, of the truth about who God is every day. And some of you don't have kids, but you've got grandkids, or you've got neighbor kids that hang around you or whatever. They need that. The culture is constantly programming them with all sorts of nonsense that's not true about who they are, and it's not true about who God is. Yes. And it comes at them every day, most of the day. So you need a habit. You need a habit like you've got the habit of brushing your teeth every morning. You need a habit that feeds yourself God's word. Amen. That reminds you about who he is, what he's doing, and what he has said. And I want you to be creative about it. You're, you're, you're all different. You've got different lifestyles. You've got different things going on. We are not a, on some legalistic trip about this. So, but ask God to guide you and help you to find a way to incorporate some of those things. 
Um, I'm not, because we had testimonies and stuff, and I don't want to go long on you today, so I'm not going to have you look this up, but I want to read to you out of Daniel 6.10. It says, Now when Daniel learned the decree, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he knelt down and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. This is the story, this comes out of the story, you know, about Daniel and Lion's Man, okay? He's this high official, and the other people are jealous. He's such a great guy that the king wants to put him over everybody. He's doing such a wonderful job. They're looking for a way to get rid of him. And so they concoct up this law about nobody praying to anybody except the king. Okay, long story short. But Daniel, here's the decree, okay? So here's the new law. And what does he do? He goes upstairs to this room where he opens the window towards Jerusalem and he prays again. He prays three times a day. Now this is Daniel's habit. And in spite of the fact that now it's going to be illegal, he's still going to keep up this habit. Daniel's ability, as you read the book of Daniel, Daniel's ability to continue to serve under all these different kings and never lose sight of who God was, though he was in a pagan culture, was he was always connecting with the true and living God, with mm -hmm. his word and in prayer, yes. always connecting daily, daily. Because why daily he was in Babylon mm -hmm. under all these other influences. But he, and he didn't even let go when it got hard when he was going to have to maybe pay a price. He just didn't let that deter him. Why? Because he knew that his lifeline was his prayer with God. Okay? Mm -hmm. We must abide in the vine. It's our lifeline. Mm -hmm. Don't try to live this life any other way. Mm -hmm. We need him. Yes. And Daniel knew that. And if you look down further and you get to Daniel in chapter 9, when, when Daniel is praying earnestly for the nation because it's time for them to come out of bondage and God sends Gabriel to talk to Daniel. Okay, well, Daniel's not a guy who just called out on God when he was in a jam or he was in the mood. This thing that you read in chapter 9 going on with Daniel and an angel coming to him and giving him a message is born out of a lifestyle that Daniel has. Okay, so there's that foundation of that lifestyle. And that can, you know, it's a habit. It's his habit. You can say it was his habit. Yes. So those are just some examples of some, some great habits. Yes. And we have lots of different habits in our lives. And I'm not going to go into all of them. I will mention, though, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Interesting. This is talking about your thought life habit. You know, we have thought-like habits. You might not think about that. You have physical habits, but you have thought-like habits. And some of them you're maybe really aware of, and some of them maybe not conscious of at all. Um, some of us have a habit of being critical in our thinking. Maybe you grew up around it. Maybe it's just natural to you. But you can have a habit of being critical in your thinking. Um, you can have a habit of expecting things to go badly. You can have a habit of worrying or fretting. But you can also have a habit of always turning to the Lord about every concern. You can have a habit of trusting him in the midst of junk. So that when some crisis smacks up in your life, you already used to look into the Lord and instead of going into panic mode. The, the, the fact that you have the habit helps you do it automatically. Am I right? If you got a habit of doing something, you can kind of do it automatically without thinking about it. If you've never done something,
something before, you got to put your whole entire focus and energy into doing it, <coughs> understanding it, and doing it. Yes. But if you're in the habit of something, then it's easy for you to just go right to that when you need it. And so developing these things, these habits in our lives that help us to be stronger in the Lord and growing in the Lord, they will help you in your everyday life and your growth, and they will be there when life slaps you yes. down. They will be there. Okay, so um, that that whole idea of thinking about things that are pure and all that, I mentioned that scripture because we live in a world that is full of bad news and trouble and discouraging things. Amen. Some of us have jobs where we have to look at the underbelly, the worst of the worst of what's going on. Some of us, you know, people that are social workers and they have to take care of kids whose parents have just neglected them to a level that can give you nightmares. So you, you've got all of those kinds of things in your life. It could be things that are happening in your own personal life, things that happen on your job, or just the neighborhood. Is it hard to stay uplifted when you got to drive through all of this? I think it is. I think it's a struggle, all of it. Just what we see happening around us. And, and so that is going to happen automatically in your life. You're automatically going to have to deal with things that are discouraging or bring anger to you and frustration to you and things like that. So it takes an intentional, conscious effort to think about the things that are noble and pure and true. You have to be intentional about it. So if you just come home when you're tired and just flip on the TV and just flittle through whatever happens to be on there, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it that way. So think about what you're feeding your spirit and your body and your mind in your everyday life. And so I would... Um, Say, as Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need our minds renewed. And some of us have been walking with Jesus a long time, and we still need some aspects of our minds renewed. And some of us are, you know, caught in having God in boxes. You know, we, we think something about culture is better or worse. As if a faster beat or a slower beat was more godly, or being loud or being quiet was more godlier. You know, we can have all sorts of little junk in our brains that needs to go. And so the renewal of our minds is something that takes a lifetime. Jesus is constantly shaping us, right? He's constantly shaping us. You are going to grow from here until the day he takes you to heaven. You are going, that's his intention. His intention is for you to grow and for him to constantly be shaping you. So the thing that he will talk to you about right now is going to be different than the thing he talks to me about right now. Mm -hmm. So this is not about giving people a list of do's and don'ts in their lives and telling you you should never do this anymore and you better start doing this. It's not about that. It's not about legalism. And I don't want you to be overwhelmed and go over on, you know, 50 different things at once. Because some of us need to work on the way we eat. We really do. Some of us need to work on our sleep patterns. We really do. Some of us need to get more scripture going in our lives. Some of us need to increase our prayer lives. Okay? Some of us need to stop talking about other people. Some of us need to, you know, stop thinking that the worst thing is what's probably going to happen. You know, some of us need to, you know, there's all sorts, but we're all different. So there's good things that God has already set you free from and that you're already walking in, but there's other things that are hindering you. We all got these hindering things. They don't have to be sin. They can just be hindering things. And we don't want those because God's got better for us than that. Amen. And it's freeing. It's a blessing. Yes. You know, it's a blessing to have the abundance. 
components of, of the way God wants your life to be. So I'm going to say um, to think about your life in your own private time, pray and ask God to help you maybe pick one thing to add to your life as a new habit that will help you. And you ask the Lord to show you what that would be. Of course I'm going to say, if your prayer life and your learning God's word is weak, you probably ought to start there and let God work on other stuff a little later down the line. But um, the Holy Spirit can guide you. And, and I would just throw out some examples. You might even exchange a few habits. So you can think of something and let the Lord help you find something to eliminate. Maybe you like to watch those gossipy shows. And that's not any good for you. And God may be speaking to you about that. Okay? It, it could be anything. It could be anything. But as you as you do those things, there's also the possibility that, that God might want to give you an exchange. What do I mean by that? Well, for instance, if you have a habit of talking negatively about your children, because they put you through the flux, then maybe you could exchange that for a habit of speaking a blessing over your child. You know what I'm saying? How can I switch this up? If you have a habit of worrying, then maybe you could exchange that for a habit. Every time worry comes to me, I'm going to pray. And if I need scriptures to remind me that I have the authority to pray, if I need scriptures to remind me about praying in faith, then I'm going to put them somewhere for myself where I will see them and be reminded of them so that I'm building it into myself on an everyday basis. You follow me? Yes. So in your lives, and you all have different lives and different habits, but in your lives, I would encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you so that you are exchanging something that doesn't help at all for something that does, something that builds you up, builds people around you up. And so, you know, our habits, after they become long-standing, become our character. And, you know, we've all known people who always, no matter what, they lift up God and they honor God, no matter what is going on in their lives. That's who they have become. They started out practicing that. Mm -hmm. And then that's who they became. Right? Mm -hmm. And we probably all know some people who are just kind of bitter. Mm -hmm. And they complain and they're angry and frustrated with God about stuff. And they let that go from a thing they went through to a habit they had in the way they talked about and thought about God. And eventually it became their character. Okay, so our habits really do matter because they end up being who you are. It ends up being who you are. And so even though it sounds like a little thing, they're actually, they have a big impact. And sometimes, some of us have habits that are addictions. And those things can be changed and exchanged too. And you gotta start somewhere, so you gotta start with practicing. And just like with anything else, you might fall when you practice. Amen. So if you got a habit of drinking or smoking weed or whatever to help cope with life, you gotta start practicing. Instead of that, I'm gonna do this. And that might mean going to a meeting, because depending on how bad that grip is, maybe you need to go get some help. If you got a habit of screaming at your kids, Instead of dealing with them effectively, that might mean reading a book, listening to some tapes or whatever to give you some effective tools, going to workshops, something, okay? So, so ask the Lord to show you what he wants to work on right now. It's not total makeover today, let's change my whole life. It's what, God, would you like to change in my life now? Talk to me, lead me, and help me to successfully make a new habit that will help me be more who you call me to be and be freer from the things that are in the way. Okay, I'm going to pray with you guys and let you go. <laughs>
Father God, I thank you for the truth that is in your word. And I ask you to guide each one of us about our own personal lives. Help us, Lord, not to be overwhelmed or condemned, but just to gain the insight that we need so that we can take the next step and become even more the wonderful people that you have called us and created us to be. Father, we know that apart from you, we can do nothing. We don't attempt any of this in our own strength, but we ask for the enablement of your Holy Spirit to take us forward and grow in you. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.